been uh, 50 years now that I've been cooking on the road, in jail, uh, you know, living alone as a hermit in Madrasa. I've been cooking all the time for myself. And uh, as we say in uh, Urdu, apne hatse. I like to cook, you know, my own food. So, uh, yeah, now that's always been the case. Uh, I started actually on the road in northern Pakistan, just cooking whatever was available and cooking rotis, like the ones you can see me cooking now, but uh, obviously not cooking them as well, you know, because I've had a lot of uh, experience over the years. I always say that as a Muslim convert, all the tradition which born Muslims have, are inborn with, we have to acquire those traditions. So I think, you know, over all my, all my life, I've been, you know, acquiring the cooking skills that come down generation by generation to mainly uh, Indian and Pakistani uh, women. So, uh, and so, uh, so yeah. I've been, uh, I cooked a lot, so in, uh, you know, when I was on the road in 1970 with John, and there's a chapter on that in the uh, Talib's Tale. The first chapter is, uh, looks at our uh, traveling in the northern areas of Pakistan. In 19, uh, 1970, we were walking for about three or four months from Swat to Gilgit, and then to, uh, from Gilgit to Chitral. I arrived in Gilgit, I'd come over the mountains. So you know, Gilgit is a little bit, you know, sort of Azad Kashmir, sort of, you know. Gilgit is a little bit, you know, that area, mm -hmm. a little bit sort of sensitive area. So uh, they said to me, where did you come from? You know, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. When I got to Gilgit, I said, well, I just came over that mountain. <laughs> and they said, well, actually, this, you know, special branch officer said to me, you're not supposed to come over that, office, uh, that uh, mountain. So uh, you'll have to now get a permit, you know, in retrospect sort of thing. He was very kind. But, uh, you know, anyway, that was, uh, so uh, we were walking for about three or four months in this uh, Chidral, Gilgit, Swat, and uh, I was cooking every day for both of us. So that's really where I learned my cooking. But, you know, it was very basic in those days, very basic indeed. And then uh, I honed my, my uh, cooking skills, uh, as you mentioned, in jail. And I was, you know, because in Afghan jail, if you have no money, then you have to cook for somebody, either beg or cook for somebody. So I was able to, you know, use my cooking skill to, uh, to cook for this uh, two brothers, Abdul Haq and Abdul Salam, very nice gentlemen, very kind gentlemen from uh, Lahman, well-to-do, Hans. And so they, uh, yeah, and they were very happy with my cooking. And Abdul Salam, who was the elder brother, was kind enough to say one day to compliment my cooking in the gathering of people and say that the uh, day He understands how to cook a good dish. The sequence, the tartib of uh, cooking a good dish, he understands it very well. So after that in Madrasa, and then, uh, you know, living alone and living as a hermit. So you're always improving. And, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, you're always, always learning new things. I mean, it's the most simple thing in the world to make a roti, to cook uh, some dal. But these very simple dishes, they're the ones you can improve all the time. That's the sort of magical thing about it. Do people think they're going to be left alone just because they say, we believe? Wahum la yuftinun, but they're not going to be put to the test. No, you're going to have to be put to the test. So I look at, you know, all the trials and tribulations that I've had to undergo in the path of Islam as, you know, a great uh, blessing, really. And I don't uh, blame any, anyone for that, you know. But, you know, I did mention that I was in jail in Kabul. And, you know, somebody mentioned that, were you in, put in jail for being uh, a Muslim? You were put in jail in an Islamic country for being a Muslim? So, you know, there's certain reasons, which if you look at the history of Afghanistan over the last hundred years, that, uh, you know, progressive people are sort of distrustful of British and of mullahs. 
So, uh, you know, when you've got a British and a mullah rolled into one, then what you do, you arrest him, don't you? Because, you know, he might be a troublemaker. He's both rolled into one, both the troublemakers rolled into one. So it made me understand, you know, other people's point of view. And actually nowadays, I think one of my things in my demeanor and in my character is that I always understand other people's point of view. And I think that I, I learned that, uh, you know, in jail. And I don't blame anybody for all the, uh, you know, all the trials and tribulations in jail and stuff like that, which was, uh, which I had to undergo. It was just part of my learning course, my learning curve in Islam. And you can read more about this and uh, lots of other aspects of, of the life and times of a Pashtun Englishman. The Pashtun Englishman is me in uh, my book, which is coming out soon from uh, Cube Publishing. Uh, and it's called A Talib's Tale and T with a small T.